Hello and welcome to Acrylic Code. Today we have a new touch designer tutorial on this animation. I will show you how you can create this step by step and then you can add your own touch and be creative. Before we move on, please subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell to support us into making more tutorials. We also recently launched our Patreon with different tiers to offer all touch designer files, online tools to create generative art, as well as personalized classes. I will leave the link to the Patreon in the comments for anyone who is interested. Now back to today's tutorial. I will start by importing three images I downloaded from Google. You can insert here any image you want. Then I will press Alt N to attach an all and I will do this for each of the images. I will lock all the nulls and then delete all the images. Then let's press Tab and create a switch. Select all the images and connect them to the input of the switch. Then press Alt and N to create a null at the end of the network. Right click at the out of the null to attach a fit chop. Open the parameter window, go to the common tab and set the resolution to 150 by 150 for a squared resolution. Go back to the fit tab and set the fit parameter to fit outside. From here we're going to have two networks. The first one is going to be for the position and we'll start by instancing a grid with the same resolution of this image. Let's right click at the out of the fit and we'll attach a GLSL top. Let's go to the pixel node, put it viewer active and we'll type in as the first parameter of back 4 vuv.st, then 0 for the blue channel and we'll leave the 1 for the alpha. The VUV is a vector of 2 and will give us the X and the Y and then we'll have the blue and the alpha channel giving us all the four values that we need for the VEC4. Great, now let's right click after the GLSL to attach a math. The reason we need the math is if we display the values on the GLSL node, we notice that the values go from 0 on the bottom left to 1 on the top right. And we want the values to go from minus 1 to 1 instead. We'll set this in the range tab of the math parameter window. The from range is 0 to 1 and the to range is minus 1 to 1. Then we'll set this value here to 0 to get rid of the blue channel. Press Alt N and drag to create a null after the math. And this was going to be the position network. So let's go ahead and rename this null to pause and I will also color it red. Great, now we're going to create a sphere shop and instance this sphere with the top data from below. Attach a null after the sphere, then a transform. Right click after the transform to attach a geometry. Then press tab, add a camera and a light comp. Press tab again and attach a render. Press Alt and N to attach a null, and in between the null and the render, let's attach an RGB key to give us a black background. In here, turn the viewer on on the null top. From here, let's open the parameter window of the render, go to the common tab, and we'll also set here a squared resolution of 1280 by 1280. Let's open the parameter window of the transform next, and we'll set the uniform scale all the way down to 0.02 .02 to decrease the size of the sphere. And now we're going to instance. Open the parameter window of the geometry, go to the instance tab, toggle on the instancing and on the translate op we drop the position data. Here we'll translate with the R, G and B channels. Let's go back to the GLSL and in the common tab we'll set the pixel format to a 32-bit float format. Great, now let's switch here to Geometry Viewer for a second. We see in here that we have the camera and the grid. I will first decrease the distance to 3 and what we want here is for the camera to go closer to the grid and then go back to the original position. And this will create the effect of the infinite grids coming towards the camera one after the other. Let's go back to the top viewer and for the next step we will transform the grid into the images we imported in the beginning. Let's right click on the connecting line after the fit, go to add operator and we'll create a monochrome top. Now for our animation we want the inverted values of this, so we want the white parts to have a value of 0 and the black parts to have a value of 1. So let's right click at the out and attach a level top. 
go to the parameter window and set the invert value to 1. Press Alt and N to attach a null at the end and we'll rename this null to scale and color it red. Now open the geo parameter window and on the scale op we will drop the scale data. Set here the R, G and B channels. So we got now one of our input images as the grid. From here we will animate the camera. To do this let's start by adding a big chop. Press tab and add a pattern chop right below it. We said before that we want to animate the camera movement going from 3 to 0. Open the parameter window of the pattern and in here we'll set the type of pattern to ramp and the amplitude to minus 3. This will cause the pattern to go from 0 to minus 3. If we increase the offset to 3, then the pattern will go from 3 to 0. And these are the values we need for the camera movement. So let's go to the channel tab and rename the channel to camera Z. Great, now let's right click after the beat chop and we'll attach a lookup chop. Attach the pattern to its second input and then press Alt and N to add a null at the end of the network. Put the null viewer active and then drag and drop it onto the Translate Z parameter of the camera. Select Chop Reference. So there we have our movement. If this is too fast, we can go half as fast if we set the period of the beat to 8. To increase the FPS, I'll select all the nodes and turn the viewer off. Now, I want the intensity here to grow as the camera goes closer to the grid. So first, I will add a constant after the fit. We will add this constant in order to have the same resolution. And then in the parameter window, I will change the color to completely black, so it will have a value of 0 overall. Meaning, if I connect this to the network, then the image will disappear completely. But if I attach a crosstop after it and have the level as a second input to it, then like so we can control the intensity by changing the value of the cross. So we will animate this opacity starting from 0 to 1 as the camera approaches the image. How we do this is we can reuse the lookup from up here. The values here are going from 3 to 0 though, so we will add a math chop afterwards followed by a null top. And in the parameter window of the math, we go to range and we change the values here going from 3 to 0 to 0 to 1. Put the null viewer active and reference it to the cross parameter. Great, we're almost done here. The only thing missing is we want the image to switch every time the camera meets the grid. In order to do this, we open the parameter window of the beat chop, go to the output tab and toggle on the pulse. From here, let's press Tab and create a SELECT chop. Then drag and drop the bits to the SELECT chop and set parameter chop. Open the parameter window and select only the pulse for the channel names. So we notice here the pulse going from 0 to 1 really quick every time the distance from the camera to the grid is 0. Ok, now let's right click it out of the SELECT and attach a COUNT chop. Open the parameter window, go to the count tab and we have limit minimum at 0 and limit maximum at 2. These are the indices of our input images, so 0, 1 and 2. Attach a null after the count, put the null viewer active and then drag and drop it onto the index parameter of the switch. And there we have a different pace every time. You could add here as many inputs as you want, as long as you set the index value accordingly. So this is the base tutorial. From here I'll show you what you can do if you want to have the colors of the original image. To do this, you right click after the fit, go to add operator and add an alt top. Rename this to color and color it red. And then open the second instance tab of the geo and drag and drop the color null to the color op. Select R, G and B as channels and this is going to give you a colored image.
Now, if you want to have a better resolution, then it is not a good idea to use spheres, but rather circles. So if we attach here circle stops instead of spheres, we can go higher with the resolution, which means we can go back to the feet and increase the resolution 500 by 500, and the image will go closer to the original image. So you know that's also possible. But this is it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and supporting us. Let me know if you like it, if you have any questions or tutorial suggestions. I'm curious to see what you've come up with, so if you recreate this, be sure to tag us and I will see you next Friday with a new video. Until then, have a great time! Bye!